that, I will call the meeting to order. We have, in addition to the select board, Susan Clark, welcome Susan. Sandy Levine, welcome Sandy. And Kim Jessup, what a pleasure, welcome. Um, and we've got uh, quite an ambitious, uh, quite an ambitious agenda. So uh, let's dig right into it here. So our first, our first order of business is considering whether to implement provisions under Act 162, which permit any municipality the ability to apply the Australian ballot system to any or all of its municipal meetings held in the year of 2021 by vote of its legislative body action likely. So, uh, Susan Clark, I believe has an update for us on outside developments and then we'll throw this open for general discussion. Also, by, Actually, the way, by the way, before we start our meeting, I need you all to see I have two new tools to use. One is this little button here, which is for the last time. No, 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 no. And then I have this handy little one. Maybe. 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 That's a firm. Maybe. So get ready. <laughs> I just put new batteries in them. There you go. <laughs> Where did you get those, Peter? <laughs> I think Staples sold them years ago. They gave them to me in the office as a Christmas present because they said I was Mr. No. So they gave me this. Thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. it's, like, it's like that ad that's on TV all the time. Yeah. It starts with whoever played Mike, Mike Myers, whatever he played in that movie. Well, anyway, they're fun and they're at times useful. So Susan, you're up. Yeah, um, well, I actually didn't know I was gonna be on. I don't, uh, I, where did we leave things in terms of an update? I don't wanna bore you with things you already know. The, well, you, just, just, you know, you and I were talking the other day and you were telling me what had happened in the last two weeks and people you've been talking to and all of that. Okay. Give us a quick, quick version of that, I think that would be helpful to set the tone. Sure, yeah. Well, and you guys know, and Kimberly can join in here as well, uh, I, the legislature is looking at, um, uh, it, it seems quite certain to uh, move ahead with allowing towns to postpone their meetings if they want to, and also um, a piece of that bill, really, really simple bill, they're trying to keep it as simple as possible to get it passed right away, uh, is to allow you, if you choose the Australian ballot option, which was something that they gave uh, select boards the power to do last fall, um, if you want to use that, um, they will t um, give you the power, I think, to mail um, ballots, not just by absentee, but actually um, actively mail them. But um, <clears throat> so, the, and then I just, I was just curious based on uh, the conversation that this board's having, um, just sort of what, in general, what people were thinking. Um, so I just called some of our neighbors and I'm sure you guys have all done the same thing, you know, what do people think? And basically what I was hearing based on the options of should we postpone and hope to have a meeting outside in the spring versus should we just move to Australian ballot for one year only uh, and have the meeting in March? Um, obviously the March option is a lot simpler. Um, uh, people, in general, people were excited about the idea of an outdoor meeting. It sounded different and fun and that people were hopeful that uh, spring would be, um, you know, that things would have moved ahead in terms of the, the health of, of, our, of our nation. Um, but I did definitely hear a few people who said, that sounds a little scary to me. I'm not sure that I would attend that meeting. And when I heard that, that made me just sort of feel like probably the safest thing to do is to, um, is to um, go to Australian ballot for, for one year only. It's, it's not something that I am excited about at all. I, I'm, I'm worried about it, frankly. Um, and I would hope that, you know, the select board, if you do choose to do that, um, would be very um, careful in how you communicate that to the community, um, because I think it'll be confusing to people. But, um, uh, you know, I, I, it's really hard for me, the world's, you know, biggest town meeting to defender to defend, getting together face-to-face -to -face during a global pandemic. Okay, I, let me just say it, it's hard to defend. Okay, so <laughs> what else do you want to know from me? No, I, think that, I, I think that that basically, uh, ba 
basically says it. I mean, the thing the thing that concerns me is I've been paying attention, trying to pay attention to all this talk about, you know, when, assuming we all get our shots like good little boys and girls, when this pandemic is going to go away. And the best guess seems to be next summer or next fall. So it just seems to me that in May is way sooner than that. And we might not be in a substantially different position in May hopefully a better position, but not substantially different enough or safe enough to really think that an outdoor meeting makes sense. And uh, I would hate to, I would hate to make the plan to, you know, vote on the voted items on town meeting day and then plan on having a plan on having a public meeting in, uh, in May and then not be able to have it and have to then switch all that stuff over to Australian ballot seems like a very confusing convoluted situation to me so there there's also the risk that you know the governor is going to say you can't have groups of higher than you know 50 people or something like that which would make it you know impossible to have a meeting where you could li where you had to limit the number of people who would be able to come like well, did they talk about that susan in terms of like moving town meeting to like that, that there could be like some sort of crossover between something virtual and something outside um, because you know we don't know in May if they're they're going to allow any large sums of groups even if they're outside six feet apart. Yeah, at this time, electronic participation in town meeting isn't something that the um, Secretary of State is encouraging. Um, I think I I think that the legislature is going to be addressing this in the next year or two, a couple of years. That's the that's the sense I got from listening to the government operations committee's talk was that there was interest in um, virtual meetings, but um, it's not, unless you're um, Brattleboro and have an elected um, town meeting, um, the Secretary of State's office isn't um, recommending that. So combining an in-person meeting with an electronic meeting um, is, I, I, I think will be, I think that they will be addressing that, but it's probably not the way that it's not gonna, it's not gonna be, the people could attend but they couldn't vote. Let's, why don't we hear from Kim Jessup and see if she's got any later updates from the legislature. Yep, Kim. Uh, thank you, hi everyone. Uh, so um, I do not have any new information. I mean, uh, I am really here just to, if there are particular concerns that you want to flag or Susan wants to flag or anyone else and to then try to address those concerns in any vehicle or bill that might be moving forward. We haven't yet convened. We don't yet know what committees will be on. This bill is not yet in draft form. It's all discussions that have been happening with uh, folks like Susan, Vermont Leagues of City and Town, and I've not been part of those discussions. But again, if there are things that you want me to run down or bring back, I'm happy to do that. That's why I'm here. Um, and I do, by the way, just so you know, not being rude, I do have to jump off at 4.30, but thanks. Thank you, Kim. Um, the other thing, and, and Kim, correct me if you have a different uh, take on this than I do, but it sounds to me like uh, the legislature is not going to have a special session and that they're going to take this up as one of their first first things to to dig into in the new session but that likely means there would be no bill passed until probably at the earliest what the second week in january yeah they're trying to get it out of the gate very quickly and um it would all all things hopefully working well um as soon as possible I hesitate to put an exact date on it, but um, there's a lot of um, momentum and that's to Susan's point about trying to keep it fairly simple. Yeah. Yeah, well, and they're working with the governor's office as well so that they have something that both the executive and the legislative um, can all move forward with smoothly. My, just, my concern is that um, based on what we've heard from Sarah and speak up, speak up Sarah if you disagree, that that's gonna put us in a real time crunch and maybe an impossible time crunch if we don't have an answer until then, so. I think that's cutting it very close, um, yeah. especially if Susan's talking about a, an inform, a public information campaign to, to build support for 
this. My only question, Kim, and maybe, I don't know, or Susan, is I'm sure if we have a vote by Australian ballot, we've also got to have a virtual uh, information meeting, correct? All right, you're nodding. Yes. 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 That, yes. I assume, would yeah, take, that, that, it would be just like this. It would be the select board holding an informational meeting about the right. And yeah, it's an it's it's the select board's meeting. It's an, like the town meeting is a, is a, is different statutorily, but the information meeting that goes with a, uh, with an Australian ballot vote is it's all on you guys. It's the select board hosting. It's the select board running. Okay. And know. so, that, do you know if that has to be held within a certain time period? A certain I think it does, right? Okay. It does. It does. It's in the statute. I think it might be ten days. Okay. But I think something I, like that. Right too. now, of course, they could they could change that in the that that's one thing they might want to look at, uh, Kim, in your legislation, is giving some more flexibility on when to have that information meeting. Information. Rather than the ten day window. Yeah. A, a longer window. You're longer looking window. at. I mean, I, fundamentally, I don't see any reason why. Towns wouldn't be able to do it 10 days ahead, but just depending on what's going on, more flexibility. I mean, the other thing I've thought of, and I don't even know how this would work, is that potentially depending on how many interested people we had, we might have to have multiple information meetings. I mean, you get to you get to a certain number of people on Zoom, it becomes so unwieldy that it basically doesn't work. And I, if we're going to do this, I would hope we would be able to have a meeting, an informational meeting where we could have back and forth. It wouldn't be just us making a presentation in front of the assembled multitude, as they say. I don't think there's anything keeping you from having multiple meetings. I mean, they're, they're ju they just want to make sure you have one within that time frame, uh, but um, you can have lots. Peter, Mary, I thought- Are you, are you wanted... raising your hand, Mary? You need to raise it a little higher so I can see you. Thank you. <laughs> well, you saw it. You saw it when it was just down there. <laughs> well, I saw the tips of your fingers, yes. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, don't you mean a shorter period of time, shorter notices? I mean, rather than a longer period of time? I when mean, you're being able to have the meeting or meetings over a longer period of time. Yeah, okay, but not I mean, the notice, not the notice requirements. But the sh but maybe the notice should be somewhat flexible and a little bit shorter, depending on when it's passed and getting things warned and all of that. I mean, I just think that those periods need to be examined depending on whether legislation passes. Yeah. Because, you know, if we have to post something and it's a long time before, I, I don't know, we may have some time issues. That's all I'm saying. So, yeah. I just, Peter, I just checked the statute. And uh, for this year, the morning can be posted no earlier than January, January 21st. It can be posted no later than January 31st. So we are kind of coming down to the wire and all that, not to mention putting out the town report January 31st is, you know, cutting it close. Right. I mean, the long and short of all this folks is I've come around to the point of view and I did talk to Steve today and we've, we've already heard what his, his point of view is, but he thinks we should make the decision and go ahead with Australian ballot just for this year. And as Susan said, be careful what the message is so people understand that, you know, this this is a one year exception to our normal uh, to our normal practice. Or the uh, town. Yes, Mary. Or the town budget, because you know they've already voted to have the school budget by Australia. Oh no, this is just this is just the town, Mary. Absolutely, just yep. the town. But I don't know how I don't know how others. Uh, Others feel about that. Bill okay. or Liz or. I will tell you that I did get a call from Ginny Burley, who was doing a survey of towns and all the other towns around us are doing Australian ballot. I think my East Montpelier was considering it last week. Yeah, I did attend those meetings and East Montpelier definitely sounded they, they hadn't decided yet, but they uh, were sounded like they were leaning toward Australian ballot. I talked to the Worcester town clerk she uh, said that Worcester is going to Australian ballot and Callis was had just barely taken up the topic last night for the first time and you know they're dealing with the same issues that we are where they don't love the idea of um, you know if you if you do things by Australian ballot there is no amendment from the floor I mean people just don't have as much power we, we don't really get to act as legislators um, but 
um, the pandemic is a pandemic. So it sounded like um, Callis, they hadn't decided yet, but they, they were leaning that way. Um, I was just going to add that uh, I, I don't see any other way really around it either, just given the fact that May is not going to be uh, late enough in this pandemic to be able to feel like it's inclusive and um, and that it makes much more sense to um, to just have it all be Australian ballot on on town. <clears throat> sorry, on the whatever date it is, March 2nd, whatever date that is that we normally have town meeting. Um, so that that's what I would be inclined to do for this year and to make it clear that, you know, we value and support town meeting and um, look forward to having town meeting in 2022. <laughs> there you go. Yep. Yeah, yeah I, I agree with Liz. I think, you know, she said it well. My my only concern as we've talked about this over the past few weeks is is the informational meetings because you know you're you're absolutely right, Peter, with the number of people, and we could get greater attendance um, with a virtual meeting than we ever get at town meeting, and so managing that I think is going to be the the difficult piece. But maybe it's a series of meetings um, that we have so that we can kind of spread that out a little bit. I I don't know. We'll just have to work our way through it, I guess. Well, I think, and, and I am not the one to do this, and maybe we even need to hire somebody to do this, but um, I've attended a couple of large Zoom meetings in the, last, in the last month where there was essentially a professional manager managing the, managing the Zoom and would only recognize people when they raised their hands and would mute them and unmute them otherwise. So, you know, people weren't talking over each other and you know, all that kind of stuff. And it actually went surprisingly well. Now, obviously, you reach a limit as to how many people you can, uh, you can deal with. But, you know, I think we can figure out how to do it. And I think we have some time to figure out how to do it. The other, the other question, I guess, is nothing in this vote, I don't believe, has to say that we have made a decision about how we're going to handle the ballots, whether we're going to, I know, um, Sarah thinks we should have people request ballots. I've had people tell me we should send out ballots to everybody. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a separate decision we have to make. It doesn't look like, although who knows, who knows, Kim, maybe, uh, maybe somebody will slide something into that bill that passes that the state will send out ballots to everybody. I don't know. Well, right now, Peter, just uh, we don't have, the town doesn't have the authority to send out everybody a ballot. No, that's what we're they're, that's what we're in the, in the proposed, in the discussion of the legislation, that's one of the things they're talking about, Sarah. I understand we can't do it now, but we're not making we're not making we're not dealing with that at this point in time. Is all I'm saying. We're the town the meeting will still be a voting day, right? You'll still have the office open on on town meeting day all day for people to vote. Is that correct, Sarah? Well, I'm not going to have the office open, but I will be have we'll have town hall open. That's so, what I mean, town hall. Yeah. People will just do it. We'll try. It would be nice to just have the exact same model we've had for the last two elections. Mm -hmm. so we're going to have school ballots anyway, and we're going to have right. to office ballots. We're just going to have more on the town ballots than we've had before. And, and to yes, for Kim, if if they are going to require the towns to send out ballots or authorize us to do that, I hope that you'll think about what it costs to do that. Just like they did for the presidential, there must have been an allocation from the from the state. Right. Yeah, that's um, been something that I've heard discussed. Yeah. Yeah, the legislature is aware of it. And also the governor was going to see if he could maybe find some funding for that. Um, but um, they can't use the COVID, COVID money. It would have reserve to be some COVID money instead of sending it back. Not allowed. They, they've talked about that actively. <laughs> they were like, well, we've got some money. Let's not, can't do that. It has to be spent by December. Hmm. December 15th. Yes, sir. Peter, can I just, I just, just to be clear, Kim, I mean, the, we didn't absorb any of those costs for the, for mailing out the ballots. You understand that, right? The towns to, that was not on our shoulders. And even in the primary, we got some help. Um, so this will be a huge cost that's unbudgeted if we have to mail out ballots to everyone. I'm not opposed to it. I'm just saying it's going to be big, not to mention we did not actually do it. LHS, a company in New Hampshire, mailed all the ballots. Yeah, the the dollar figure I've heard 
a million dollars and other figures kicked around and people are super aware of that. I haven't gotten to the level of who actually sends them, but Susan, maybe you have more information or. I mean, are you, I, I, the, the one thing I know is that I'm, I'm pretty sure that if they put that in the law, the, the, the intention was to allow towns not to tell towns to do it. So it would still, I think, be the town's decision whether they wanted to do it or not. And obviously where you get the money is going to be a factor in that. So, and who oh, sends them? Go ahead. And who sends them? I mean, was it the town responsibility or is it going to be like, like for the presidential campaign and primary? I, I don't know how that works. Can you, Sarah? Right. Well, I mean, yeah, we Dorinda. Dorinda. I just... I just did some quick math. Correct me if I'm wrong, Sarah, but I think what the ones we did mail cost about 65 cents to mail out those, the ballots. And um, with 1,400 registered voters, because you're not sending them to everybody. I mean, it's only registered voters. So you're talking less than $1,000. Well, you're talking, they're going to be about 80. I would say that they're going to be 80 cents. This, the, the but, summer president, the summer pr statewide primary was 80 cents. Each okay. So you're still just, probably uh, talking, you know, same thing, 80 times 1400. I'm just using it's $1,100. Right. And there's also, okay. but there's I mean, it's, also really, it's really the Trump's also part. labor involved. And I mean, we, we understand all of that. I mean, it's not, it's not a devastating amount of money, but it's real money. Yeah, it's real money. So, so with that, um, we're already five minutes past our allotted time. Uh, somebody willing to make a motion? Uh, I'm. Sure I will. Okay, I'll second. Well, I, I'll make the the motion will be <laughs> <laughs> that <clears throat> we will move to the Australian ballot system. Um, for our uh, town budget and, and all of our other Australian ballot um, items uh, with the um, intention of uh, enthusiastically uh, looking forward to the 2022 town meeting when we can vote for the town budget in person. So okay. The correct like language, not to not to correct you, but I think the correct language would be something like um, going to Australian ballot for all items that would normally be considered at the town meeting or something okay. like that. Yes, I second it. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion, please say aye or raise your hand or nod your head. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. We've done it. Here we go. Down the slippery slope, Susan. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm already planning 2022's menu for the town meeting dinner. Very good. Maybe we should maybe we should promise steak for that dinner. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make the banana sauce for the whole town. <laughs> hey guys, thank you. I can thank you. Thank you, Kim, for uh for coming and uh Susan, thank you for all your input and help with us. Yeah, it's a difficult, uh, in the end, I don't think it was that difficult, but weeding our way through it was a challenge. So thank you very much. Thank you. Good night, all. Yep. Happy, Bye. Holidays. Happy holidays to both of you. Okay, so I have a uh, quick uh, highway report and, uh, and hiring. Uh, update on the on the hiring of the road foreman and also thoughts on the road commissioner and this is partly me and partly I'm wearing Steve's hat at the same time as I said I talked to him this afternoon so the the easiest part of this is uh the work that's been going on for the last few weeks uh the road crew was able to get during our fall spring thaw get out there and do a little grading and you know fix some of the worst uh pothole situations that we had around town so that was good unfortunately that has now come to a uh, screeching halt with the, with the uh with the colder weather but overall most of the roads are in are in good shape there are some places with potholes and people need to pay attention and and uh be aware of them but they've been out there uh 
out there sanding. Charles has been doing a good job of uh, keeping track of things. He's been communicating back and forth with me about any uh, any concerns that he has. So I think uh, I think all that is going about as well as it can be. And thank goodness we haven't had any big storms where we've been severely impaired by only having three uh, by only having three people. Um, Liz and I did meet with uh, with um, Shane. Shane, excuse me, Shane, uh, and introduce him to the road crew. Uh, we had what I consider to be a very positive uh, meeting. Everybody seemed in good spirits and and up for the uh, up for the transition. After that, uh, and I don't know if you have anything to add to that, Liz. Oh, I think that the guys, you know, everyone seemed to <clears throat> be excited about him and seemed interested. So I think it's going to be good. Yep. And uh, after uh, after that meeting out in the parking lot, he accepted the position. So uh, with that, we've been moving ahead. He had his uh, drug test today. So we'll have the results of that in a couple of days. So we can't. I guess the way this goes, Sarah, is we can't formally offer him the job, or we should, or, or he can't. We can't formalize any of this until he passes the drug test. Is that the right way to put it? Uh, that's what the DOT would says. Okay. So as much as we've offered him the job and he's accepted it, it is subject to the drug test. So within a couple of days, we will know that he's cleared the drug test, and then we're then we're off to the races. Um, the salary and vacation situation was exactly what we talked about at our last meeting with no, uh, with no deviations. So that's all, uh, all good. And he's been communicating back and forth with me. I do have, uh, Dorinda, is it you that, that who contacts the uniform company about the uniforms? Should I do that? Do you do that? I, I believe, Sarah, didn't you send a link or something to who they talked to or no? Yeah, I, you know, it's, if it's easier, I'll just contact him. I just need, if I thought he could, he can contact, I, well, I called uh, Unifirst or whatever their name is. They have an account, they have a town of Middlesex account in Lebanon. And they said he should just contact them, give him his the sizes and they will, and when he starts and they will include his uniform. But if he, you want me to serve as the, mother between that to order him a uniform i will well if you give me i'm i'm happy to do that too if you'll he sent me his sizes so i have them okay well i don't that i'm a, I'm a pretty straight straighty straighty straight double x 38 waist 32 okay. inches big body short legs well i mean we are we are reporting so i think that if you i can take care of that for you it's not a problem i just need to know his start date it's going to be january 4th Okay. Did Peter, did you get any of the paperwork that I sent to him? No, I have not. So I presume he hasn't. I'll I'll follow up with him on that. I've been I've been laser focused on the making sure we got the drug test. Okay. Yeah, making we just sure should... we got the drug test completed. It um, would be good to have that in place. Yes. Oh yeah. Well for once for once we're doing it before the fact, not after the fact. So it's all good. I just want to be sure that that drug test is good before we go too much farther down the yellow brick road. Um, so anyway, I, I really think think that's all good. He he is very excited. He did. Uh, we had a little conversation about, you know, how he was because he lives in Plainfield, how he was going to deal with, you know, surveying the town roads in terms of storms. And he said he and his wife had already talked and He's talked to his father and his plan is he's just going to hunker down at the farm when there's a bad storm coming. So he'll be here, which I think is a great, uh, a great compromise. So um, in terms of, in terms of the road commissioner, there's, there, there's sort of a boiling pot going on in the community, I guess, about the, about the, about the road commissioner. Um, we certainly need to figure out how we're going to go forward with this, um, whether we are going to uh, open it up, which in some way, manner, shape, or form we need to. Um, I, I don't, I don't, I, I really don't know how we need, we want to proceed. And I don't think we need to proceed 
proceed immediately. We can work our way, work our way through the transition. He understands, Shane understands that um, in the initial part of this process, he's gonna be supervised and directed by the select board, not by his father, but his father is certainly gonna be involved in the training and acclimation, uh, acclimation process he has to be. Um, there's been some talk of, of uh, trying to find a quote unquote volunteer uh, road commissioner. If we could find somebody who was, who was willing to do this the way select board members have, have done it in recent times. I don't think we've ever had a volunteer road commissioner who wasn't either the road foreman or a, or a select board member, but it isn't to say that there might not be somebody out there who would be willing to do that. It's a little scary to think of taking on another, and I don't know, Steve, Steve is, is, is giving some thought to how much, how much time it really takes and what it would be. Is it a halftime position? I don't know. But even it, it would certainly be at least, at least a halftime position, which of course is, is uh, potentially real money, especially when we're in the throes of trying to hire a new financial person. So we've got some work to do on that. Um, when it comes to the okay. budget situation, I think we would be remiss not to put some money in the budget to allow for a paid road commissioner, but we can talk about that, uh, talk about that when we get to that. Um, I think that's basically it, unless anybody has any questions. Okay. Treasurer's report. Um, well, let's see. The we've got our annual audit back. Um, we talked, uh, Peter and I talked to our auditor today um, and went over a couple of points on it. And she's gonna be finalizing. We have to get back to her with a couple things and she will be sending through the final report. Um, and that's basically it with the audit. Um, as far as the bookkeeper position, I don't know if you wanna take up that portion of it now, or if you wanna wait to, you know, like we have other people that are attending for other things, if we wanna, you know, delay that portion till we get to the budget part and tie those all in together or? I think that's probably better because a big part of that is the money piece. Mm -hmm. So why don't we, why don't we, why don't we wait for that? Okay. Yes, Mary. Peter, you had some comments about the audit and uh, I was going back through my emails trying to find one when you sent it, where you sent us the audit and two your comments. So I couldn't find either. So were those concerns that you raised in your emails addressed during your meeting with uh, Dorinda and Bonnie today or yes. whoever? Yes. The she had a rather uh, rather severe finding in her draft that, that Dorinda strenuously objected to and I agreed with her. And we talked our, we talked our way through that and we're going to have instead of a finding uh, a much lighter recommendation about a change in procedure. So, and that will be only in the management letter, not in the, not in the audit. So we had a good meeting with her. I mean, I wouldn't say it was too friendly a meeting, but it was okay. She was okay. Dorinda behaved herself like a good girl, uh, which is nice. She wasn't smiling. It, always was. <laughs> it was, it was okay. We're going to have, so when we get, when we get the final draft, the plan is to have Bonnie come in per usual and go off with everybody. But I think you, le you left that meeting basically satisfied, weren't you, Dorinda? Not necessarily happy, but satisfied? No, nope, that's fine. Yeah. So will you send a copy to us rather than having to get it on by I'm email? Yes, we will. As soon as we, as soon as we have it, we'll make sure everybody gets it, yes. Thank you. You said you want an actual copy, not, the, not sent by email? I can't read those things by email. I mean, they're just too long. So yes, I want a physical copy. 
Okay. Well, we'll let you know when it's available and we can figure out how to get it. I mean, ultimately we can mail it to you, but if you can stop by the town clerk's office and grab it. I can do one or the other. Yep. Yeah. That would be yeah. fine. Okay. Okay. Anything else, Dorinda? You're all good? Uh, that's no, I think we're all good. I do have one, one question, just quick question for you. Mm -hmm. Um, and maybe I just, I, I, fouled it up and deleted it or didn't get it, but I never got a copy of the budget as it stands after our last discussion. Well, that's yeah. because I didn't send it. <laughs> well, that's, yeah. that's a good explanation. So, so the, um, so I'm my kind only of... question was, is that in a state where you can send it to us now for our budget discussion tonight or no? Well, I don't think it, I mean, I can send it. It's really not a lot different than where yeah. we were before. I was kind of waiting for tonight so we could get the real salary numbers in there. And actually this week, I also got um, another, um, one of the ones that we had just plugged in, I got a real figure on it. So I was kind of okay. just holding off right. okay, rather than fine. keep sending it. That's fine. We can we can talk about that. We can talk about okay. that during the. I, I just thought I might have missed something that I was supposed no. to get. I didn't get. No. Okay. So guess what? Now we're back ahead of schedule. Um. Considering the beach end project commitments for the bike ped scoping study with twenty percent town match action possible. So here we are. We're back. We're back to this again. And I don't know, Sandy. Do you want to? Yes, I can. I can talk about it. Theo um, Kennedy's is also a planning commission member. He's on as well, and yep, um, he's Theo. and he he's been somebody who's actually been uh -huh. working a lot on this, both in, as a planning commission member and also as sort of leading one of the groups um, connected with what's next, Middlesex, on um, Village. Uh, um, vitalization and, and working on projects in the village. But basically, but this VTrans grant, which the select board um, provide a letter of support for the town to apply for, it was awarded and we have $30,000 to move forward with a scoping study, which more clearly identifies what any costs would be for improvements to uh, put in sidewalks um, through the village and is a necessary piece before VTrans would move forward with a project to, um, to, ha to have sidewalks or road improvements like that. Um, we, the, the grant request also included looking at um, both costs and what, what um, issues might be for bil uh, building a, a more of a recreation path, a walking path along, along the river as well, which was both of these came out of the walkable Middlesex study that we worked with with the boys in King. Um, you know, going forward, uh, these VTrans grants are a little more complicated than the municipal planning grants. Um, it was brought to our attention that the regional planning commission can assist in the administration of the grant, which seems like that that would be a good idea. Um, we'd need to have a separate contract with them. Bottom line is overall, we have $30,000. There's a 20% town match for that. Um, you can invoice time for town employees. Like if somebody, a, a um, employee of the town like Sarah is spending time doing something for this grant and keeps track of that and it can include that in the invoice, that can, that can be part of your 20% match. Other sorts of in-kind contributions are a little more difficult to, because they require a lot of paperwork um, in terms of justification and, and supporting them because this is, these are federal dollars and there's a whole slew of other um, requirements that, that go along with that. Um, so it is a, they said it's a 30,000 grant. There's a 20% match, with a, which is $6,000. The way it works, it's a reimbursement grant. So the town would have to pay for it. Then you submit your invoices and then you get reimbursed from VTrans. And um, what I was hoping to do is um, maybe we might be able to work, continue to work with Du Bois and King who did the initial work on this project. Um, 
and they they have pre-approval to be at the ready to do these sorts of um, projects um, without having to go through uh, the a, a bidding process but that the planning commission needs to make that determination and then secondly have a separate contract just for administration with the regional planning commission and they could do that for 10% um, of the grant, which would be $3,000. Yeah, you know, either way, it's still gonna cost the town $6,000. If there's town employee time um, spent on this, you can um, invoice for that. I don't know if there's gonna be time from the road commissioner or from Sarah, but if there is and they can invoice for that, that could be reimbursed. So the $3,000, which they estimated for administration, if we do that internally, that doesn't count, count as a credit towards the match, does it? If, if, you, if you do that, if we do that internally, that does count, but we have to invoice for it. And okay. part of what I was hearing from, um, I, you know, particularly Sarah is that she's dealing with a lot of things right now and managing these grants as well is, is a big burden. And secondly, these VTRANS grants are pretty complicated. No, I understand. I understand all that. The, the the question is, one of our one of our goals in hiring this new financial position, whatever we're going to call it, and we're going to talk about it in the in the budget discussion, is to have somebody who has the capability to do part of their responsibility is going to be that grant administration. So, rather than rather than spending another three thousand dollars if we have an employee in house who can do that. So it isn't an undue burden on undue burden on Sarah, uh, then that's, that's a pretty good swing and it helps pay for that new financial person at the same time, as long as that money can be part of the match. That's all I'm thinking about. And I don't know how other people feel about that. Um, Sarah, what do you think about that? Well, um... like I should have my face on here. Um, you know, I, I don't know how, I, it's hard to know exactly what um, what's gonna be involved in a grant that I've never met, administered before. So I don't know how much work, but I can just tell you that I, and I don't know when this starts. So uh, I can tell yeah, you that- That's a good question. When, when would this likely start, Sandy? Within the next month or two, you need to submit the contract, get a contract back, you put it out to bid or sign a contract with whoever the, the major consultant's going to do. So that I'm, you know, assuming that that would take a month or two, but it's intended to happen over the next, you know, few months. So the timing is really difficult. If we're, if I'm going to be mailing out 1800, 1500 ballots and processing 1500 ballots coming back, not to mention putting out the town report, um, I, I have some concerns about whether or not our staff can handle that. On the other hand, I keep thinking, why are we paying $3,000 to Central Mont Regional Planning Commission? We already pay them money. I mean, it just seems like it's more, it's more costs on top of that. But, you know, I don't know because I haven't managed one of these grants. I've only managed a FEMA grant. I do know that I got inquiries today from VTRANS asking if we had certain policies in place and, um, you know, questions about that before they gave us any money. So I don't know. They were very vague about what money we were it wasn't seem to be tied to any particular grants. It seems like if it's a little, you know, cart after the horse, if they're already talking about the trans grants we're already supposed to get, do we have the policies in place? So that's just a perfect example of how these things can get complicated, mucky, really fast. So just, I don't know. I've been on too many Zoom meetings today. I apologize. So in terms of cost for the town, Sandy, just to be clear, if we, if we subcontract with uh, the League of Cities and Towns to no. do the administration, the region, the, the regional planning the commission, regional planning commission. I'm sorry. Um, does that count towards our match since that's money out of our pocket? Yes. Okay. So it, so it really doesn't matter one one way or the other. One way or the other, the administration is part of our is part of our match. It just depends on whether we want to sub it out or not. And I guess. Yeah. My feeling on that is after after hearing from Sarah that if this is all going to start up in the next month or two, that is not the time to put put extra work on her shoulders. And I think we need to consider subbing out the subbing out the administration. Can I can um, I just add something here? Uh, 
this is Theo. Can I add something here? I, first of all, I, Peter, I appreciate it, uh, having us on. Uh, and your comments about a creative use of the financial person makes some sense to me. I mean, if there's a flexibility on our, on the grant tour side at all with the timeline, we would want to look at that and and not have it be undue burden on the town and have it work better in that regard. I mean, uh, I, I not to say what Sandy said earlier, but one piece about this scoping is it's it's kind of the chasm between the municipal planning grant money that we already got and any future other grants that are ever going to be possible. Like you have to do this, maybe folks remember that, but you have to do this scoping step to get to the next step. And, and this isn't, I would say it's less about, you know, a sidewalk, a physical sidewalk as defining a, a, a place and a destination. And, and that's kind of the way the Du Bois and King's project, uh, Threw itself out. The reason we land with sidewalk or crosswalk is it was within the phase area where you didn't have to uh, take control of the road. So if you had that portion of the road uh, still not within our control, there are limited kind of infrastructure things that can be done. So that's the thing I would say to, I hope, segue to Sandy briefly saying there's something also exciting about this and that Planetary Matters really has kind of stepped up as a partner as an outgrowth of the what's next Middlesex economic infrastructure. They weren't the only ones there, uh, but they want to kind of help. Uh, it wouldn't count toward the match in this grant, and I don't, I don't, but there are other funding opportunities that could wrap around. Like, I just don't want to, were you going to talk about the demo project at all, Sandy? So I think it's worth the select board knowing, I think, however, that uh, tied to this possible project, which we already said we would get. And by the way, congratulations on the other budget planning grant. That's great news. Uh, but but um, but for, for this thing, there may be the possibility to get other monies to do a, de a demonstration project where it would kind of be a, a little build out at the crosswalk between the development across the street. I and mean, I don't want to get ahead of my skis too much, but I think there's a lot of interest to make make it better understood by the community and more welcome because you know, even though there was a recent survey that perhaps didn't put this at the top of the list, there was a lot of enthusiasm and work over time uh, through the What's Next Middlesex. And the committees that came out of that kind of all converged nicely around this nest. If there were a trail that did kind of a circumambulation of the town center that would be tied to trail work or the open space endeavors by weatherization town buildings. So I, don't, I, that's, I just want to thank you for letting us come on and really hope that you'll reaffirm your commitment. And if I can do anything, I, the last thing I want to say, I would offer my time, but I'm not an employee, but to, to help um, shepherd this uh, once we had it underway, because it really has to be meaningful. I just don't want it to be a cookie cutter step. It really has to make sense between what the design phase was and what the kind of pre-positioning for grant will look like. And, to me, there's a lot riding on it. So I don't, I don't, I wouldn't want us not to be involved. And I say us, me, uh, as intimately under your direction and the planning commission's direction uh, as possible. So those are the thoughts that I had and thank you. Thanks, Theo. Um, I do have, I do have one under question and I don't know whether this is a Theo question or a Sandy question, but when I talked to uh, Steve today, he asked me to ask is there a possibility, and I think I already know the answer to this, but is there a possibility to include um, what he called the bike lane option versus the sidewalk option in the scoping grant, or have we already, have we already crossed the river and this is pointed just at sidewalks? I'm not sure I know what the bike lane option is, is to just... So well, Steve's, Steve's idea was that he expressed a couple of times through the through the process was rather than to have a sidewalk right. to have a bike lane on the side of the road, which could be marked off and could be I mean, it could be a, a walking lane slash bike lane, not just a bike lane. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that the, those have been focused on, um, you know, keeping them separate from traffic more. And part of it is through the village to sl try and slow traffic down and have dedicated space that's not in the traveled way as a bike lane, walking lane. That's The bike lane is just a, a wider shoulder. And I think that that was looked at um, a, a little bit as part of the um, walkable Middlesex study. And while it, you know, it, that it would not really accommodate and address the safety concerns for pedestrians in town. I would just add to that, 
in order to get that broader width that might have accommodated a walking path, whether it's paved or not, and a bike path, it, at least through the more narrow stretch of town, it would have meant that the project, we would have had to take over that stretch of the road, which was a wholly other scale of financial yeah, model. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I understand that. I don't think we want to be in a position where we take over the road. Right, right so that's why we foreclosed the bike path initially. There's a okay. section of the road that's quite narrow as well, and it, it would not be able to physically accommodate a, you know, the additional width for the bike path through there. With its current ownership. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's just, it's just a little ironic to me that we're going to create a sidewalk and space in between the sidewalk and the road, which is surely going to take up more space than a bike path would take. But anyway, we don't want to take sorry, over, the, wanna, take over the road. I get that totally. Well, so, there's a, the easement that's there is lot, just so that we know, because it's important, is kind of already a pedestrian travel path and you wouldn't necessarily need to pave that. And I think a lot of the butters, I mean, there are four butters who want who want this, the planetary matter, but, but the other ones there, anyway, I just to know that I don't think there's any broadening. It's just kind of going on an existing path uh, that would could be paved. And I don't know whether we would ultimately need to be, but it certainly can't be understood until we scope it out. Just, Okay, and I guess, and I guess this. So here's here's the second part of his question, which is also one of my questions, is when we talk about a sidewalk, I think of sidewalks in Montpelier. I think of the sidewalks in Moortown. I think of, you know, I basically think of poured concrete sidewalks with granite curbs and everything that goes with them. Um, is there any option not to have it be a concrete sidewalk, which is going to frost heave and fail over time and need to be maintained and et cetera, et cetera? In other words, can it be can it be what, for lack of a better word, I would call a stay mat path separate from the separate from the road? I don't know the answer to that question. It's certainly something that we could explore. I do know that we are looking at doing this within the VTrans right of way. So they have a lot of say on what it looks like, feels like, so on. Um, and something tells me VTrans wants a concrete sidewalk. Okay, well, all I, all I, my, my only request would be uh, to have them look at options other than a concrete sidewalk, if that's possible. A concrete sidewalk to me is kind of a nightmare, but anyway. Take heat, sure. Yes, Sarah. Uh, if it's within the V-Trans right away, does that mean the V-Trans will uh, maintain the sidewalks during the winter? Nope. Oh. That'd be too good to be true. No, and that's, that's you know, that's a, that's a big part of the concern. I, I, I would also uh, also say at this, at this point in time, having, having thought about this a lot over the last two weeks, and as I said, I talked to Steve today Steve has come around to the point of view that we should go ahead with this, that we, we started down this path and that we should, we should follow through and do this next, this next step to at least put us in a position to go forward. And I guess I am in the same place at this point of time, which is a little different from what I was saying, uh, what I was saying two weeks ago. So I don't know how everyone else feels. Yeah, Phil. Uh, Peter, I, I agree. Um, you know, I think we we should move forward. Um, and again, thinking about uh, contracting out the uh, management of the grant, as long as we've got to spend the money anyway, and it's part of our our um, participation, part of our match, um, it takes it takes the burden off of Sarah. And as she said, I think we you know we've got a lot of things on our plate, at least right now. Um, we're headed, I think, in the direction of hiring uh, the financial person who eventually will be able to do these kinds of things, but we're not quite there yet. The timing isn't, isn't right. great. So I, I, you know, I think the subcontract makes sense. Yeah. I agree. Comments, Liz, Mary. I agree with uh, Phil's comments and yours. And does it, I mean, does it fall in line, the pricing, of the match fall in line with what it would cost to manage it through 
the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission, or is it going to be like they're going to bill us for like ten thousand dollars? No, I, th I mean the, the administration costs are, are like limited to to ten percent, so that has to be only for three thousand um, dollars. And so they, they can, can do it for that, Sandy. I think they can do it for that um, okay. for the, for the administration of it, and I think we can add some of the other administrative costs, reporting, and so on into what the contractor the um, the consultant themselves are doing, so there's not a you know additional work. And um, you know, I know Du Bois and King is is fairly familiar with these requirements that BTrans has, and that the you know um, has for these these sorts of grants. So it is a more complex grant. I'm not sure I knew that going into it, but you know, sometimes you figure these things out as you go. But I think that having with that having the regional planning commission who has familiarity be able to manage it and administer it would be really helpful. Yeah. Anything else to anybody? We ready for a motion? Yeah. Don't everybody look sideways at once. I'm looking to see what, what the motion is. I'm trying to find my, my, uh, Agenda. I'll do it. I move that we um, approve the VTrans project commitments for the bike dash ped scoping study with a required 20% town match. I'll second. Can you add with the intention that the administration will be set yes, down? That yes, was, that was implied, but I can certainly say it in uh, an okay, addition. I think it would just be good to have it in the minutes. With, with the um, condition that the Central Vermont Planning Commission will do the, the um, administrative work for the grant at the cost of no more than 10% of the grant or $3,000. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Okay, thank you. Um, when you're going to the discussion that the, the, the select board already approved um, right. the applying for the grant you provided a letter of support what's before the select board now is signing the the, the grant to uh, signing the letter that would would move forward the grant agreement with vtrans and i provided a copy of that letter to sarah yeah okay okay so Wait. then i withdraw that motion and say i move approval of the town signing the the vtrans contract um to do the um bike ped scoping study with a 20% town match to be administered by the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission for $3,000. Before we go on, this grant says- okay, wait a minute, uh, hold, on, hold on just a second, Sarah. So do, do we have a second to that motion? Please, well, thank you. Okay, go ahead, Sarah. Well, it just says that the name of the full-time municipal employee in responsible charge, in responsible charge of this project, regardless of any additional contract and management services, Sarah Merriman, select board executive assistant. I think we can take an executive, but do you, that you guys still want to, that's still my name, responsible charge, Sarah Merriman. I'm the only full-time employee. Oh, right? put me on there, Sarah. You I'm can't, you're not, a, you're not, no, you're put not a full right on there. You're not a full-time employee. I have, there's oh, only- yes, I am. These days, I feel like I am. Well, I have to pay. That's not going, in other words, it's not going to be the new road form. And there are only two full-time employees. I mean- Yeah, it's going to be you, Sarah. Congratulations. Then, unfortunately, it has to be you, yes. Okay. And who's going to sign, who you, got, uh, you guys also have to authorize the municipal official to sign this. So who is going to be authorized to sign this? Well, the chair. The chair? Okay. Okay. We don't think we can have Sarah sign it? No, I can't sign it myself. I'm the miss. I'm the author. The municipal. All official. right. Okay. Thank you, All right. Good. Okay. <laughs> Any pro the fun just goes on, Aye. doesn't it? Okay. So, are we ready for a vote? Aye. 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 Liz. Aye. Okay. Is that everybody. Me. I say aye. So, I think we've done it, guys. Here Thank we go down much. the road. Thank, Thank you, you, Sandy. And I had there Thank was you, one, Thank you very much. There one was under. one other. Um, I, I had passed along a contract for the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission to work with the Middlesex Planning Commission on zoning, um, as a consultant to work on zoning, and that is money that is within our budget for this year, 
and we've already begun that work. And um, that contract also needs to be signed by, I think, Peter. So I didn't see that in our packet. I sent it. Okay. I'm, I'm it's a, it is just a real, it's just, just all you need to do is just making you aware of the, of the money. But yes, Peter, when you come in to sign the scoping grant, you can sign the study. I've got okay. the, the, okay. the zoning up. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thanks very much. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Bye bye. Bye. Before we go into our, our budget workshop, I would just like to acknowledge what has already been brought up that we we received our other grant, which Liz applied for. Congratulations. Yeah, I was going to ask about it in the other business because there's, I mean, and I can ask it right now, I guess. Sure. Um, we have 45 days in which to approve it, and I don't need approval to approve it, do I? I can just go in and because there's only so many of us can go into the database, um, into the grants uh, document to approve it. So I don't know the answer to that. I don't think there's an, I think it's not an approve it, it's accepting it. We don't, do we need to vote to accept this? I don't think so. If we I don't applied, think so either. We applied for it. Right. Go okay. ahead and see if you can. So I'm just going to go ahead and accept it. But then we really do need to have a conversation um, in January at our Jan, you know, at some point about starting this process. And and I'll get in touch with um, I'll get in touch with you know my contact that helped us out with with this grant, and and have a sort of offline meeting with Susan. Get in touch with the people who are interested in sort of participating in this. Um, because, you know, we're going to want to have a chair of this committee and all that. I'm not going to want to be that chair. So how much did you get? How much money did you get? You know, $9,000. It's mainly hiring um, Central Vermont Regional Plan Planning Commission to do the work for us, basically. Um, but but help us out. And it's got a, um, I think it's a 10% match. So nine, $900 um, is, the, is the match that we have to give. Um, so, but, but the idea is that the person that we're going to be, I think it's Claire actually from Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission, she'll be, you know, working with us, helping us lead the meetings as well as, you know, giving us, you know, sort of, you know, how we create this whole, um, capital, uh, plan and it's going to be over the course of a minimum of 12 months. So this isn't something that gets done quickly. It's 12 to 18 months when we'll have a finished product. Um, so, um, so anyway, um, I, I'll, I'll kind of start that, get that ball rolling. Um, and I know Susan's sort of thinking about some people that might be good um, chairs who have this sort of experience with this kind of thing. Um, yes. And, um, and that, that have already expressed interest, like that filled out the survey and said, yes, I'm interested. Um, so, um, and, you know, we'll be putting it out there again, but we are going to, you know, we're going to need um, representation from the select board and we're going to need someone who, you know, is, is sort of in charge of this. Um, and it's not going to be Susan, I can tell you that. Um, but hopefully it can be a volunteer as opposed to, say, me who wrote the grant. <laughs> so anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there that that is sort of another thing that's going to be happening. And of course, from our budget committee, we're going to want representation as well um, for this process. Um, so anyway. Here we go again. Here we go again. Exactly. Be careful what we wish for. That's exactly right. But exactly we can right. write down believe, that we I did believe that. Those were, I believe those were your exact words to me in your email. <laughs> but you know we did tell the town that we would take it seriously and we did and so now we have to actually do the process um so that you know we are as transparent as possible with our townspeople about what our expenses are going to be over the next 10 years right well thank you liz and thank you for all the work you put in yeah and susan too susan uh, did a lot of uh work on that as well so oh i know she did i already i already thanked her off, yeah, off, off <laughs> I don't want to take credit for Thanks, it. Thanks, Liz. Oh, we'll give you we'll give you credit. You'll get you'll get credit and blame both. <laughs> I know. That's the beauty <laughs> of it. 
Okay, thank you. Oh, and one more thing too. I think you, we just so everybody knows, I drew down the last of the the money from that previous grant from um, the uh, Sandy's group. So they were approved, and that should settle that. So now that we have a final report, we need to submit. No, it's already done. It's all submitted and the oh, check is on done. its way. Great. Yeah. Great. Wow. Thank you. Good work. Yeah. Thanks, Liz. Well, I didn't do it. It was Mitch who did it. All I had to do was press the button and, and Liz, push the push the other button. button. The button presser gets the credit. You made it happen. <laughs> no, Sandy Thank and Mitch uh, got, got it going and all I had to do was was do it. So okay, great. Okay. Thank Plus, you. when you get when you get a compliment, just accept it and shut up. <laughs> okay, but Sandy's still on. I don't want to take credit when she's still on to listen. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, guys. So I think that we're going to interrupt uh, our regular our regular meeting and move into our uh, into our budget discussion. Peter, before yeah. we do that. If I end up not staying for the whole meeting, the EV charging station issue, I'm yep. trying. To, I'm on. A, I'm, I'm trying to work through WEC to find out how this all happens. So can we postpone that till the next month? Our next meeting. I mean, possibly we can, but I I would tell you, and I don't know how others feel, but my my answer to that request is is no way, Jose. I mean, I. Why would we? Why, would, is, why in the world would we ever want to do that? So, okay, I, don't, well, I, don't, I wouldn't spend a lot of time on it, Mary. Is what I'm suggesting. Okay. Well, your answer is we're not going to assume it. Then you can vote on it. Well, <laughs> is anybody is anybody else thinking it's a good idea that we take on this? Well, I'm not thinking it's a great idea, but I am saying it does align with our town plan to have these kinds of services available to our townspeople. And so, you know, I, I, so, so in some ways I'm like, you know, do we have a certain obligation to at least somehow consider this or maybe do some sort of concession where the school pays for half and we pay for half? I, I, I don't know. I, I do have a problem with like, even though nobody uses it and it's, it, it doesn't mean that people aren't in the future and it goes against getting rid of it goes against our are the 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 energy part of our town plan but i understand well, the cost let's, and all let's that table it let's table it for tonight then and have a more i, would, I, I want to you know, understand i'm on the WEC board and i don't understand how it happened i don't know what kind of contract the schools you know signed with them i don't know how they didn't know this was an expense that was coming up and they did so, of course they knew okay yeah, so the buy if your vote is no, we're not going to assume the debt. That's one thing. If you want to discuss sharing it, then, you know, I think we should table it. I think we should table it. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm saying I'm ruling. We're going to, we're going to table it. I couldn't, I couldn't believe it when I got that letter. I just about blew a fuse. It took, took two of, uh, two of Dorinda's, uh, special drinks to calm me down before, uh, <laughs> before I could read the rest of the letter. <laughs> anyway, I, I just think it's I just think it's outrageous. I, I, I was I was so upset that I had an email two thirds written saying that because we were going to be taking over the cost of this charging station that no sand would be available for Molly Supple Hill Road because after all we couldn't we couldn't take like they're saying they're going to take precious money away from their students if they keep this charging station. Well, we might be taking special sand away from the access to the school but i thought better of it you'll be glad to know anyway i just feel like we need a little bit more information and that we need to um like there there could be some actual like opportunities to make money like it could become a charge point on the map right now it's not because yeah, of the it's, bank free, it's free electricity oh, it is. you understand that uh well I mean, maybe we can charge for it. why would they maybe do that a charged one but where you pay well, well, I said we have to work with WEC, and I want to find out. Yeah, we're tabling okay, it. Okay, we're going to table it. Yeah. We're going to table it, guys. So let's you let's check the school is, and I'll check with WEC. 
I want a, I want a picture of Liz's Tesla plugged into that charger. I don't use it. I use my own electricity and I pay for my own, if just for the record. Well and, that's what I, well, and that's what I say. The only person who would use that charging station is someone who worked at the school who had an electric car. Is some member of, we've tabled it, but is some member of town going to come and leave their car parked in the school parking lot overnight charging on that charger? Sometimes they do, yes. Much. They do. If they're desperate and the power's out, they do. I but very, very infrequently. I tried to well, use the power's out. The power's out. Oh, the power's out of the home, but it's on there. Okay. Oh, we tried it. to use it too, Done. and it was broken. Done. I'm sorry I brought it up. <laughs> okay. No, Mary, your, point, your point's a good point. Anyway, we're tabling it, no matter what. So now we are into our budget discussion. Thank you all for your patience and understanding. So um, Dorinda has prepared, uh, let, me, let me just say something before we get into the nuts and bolts of this. So I think our approach should be to what we wanna talk about is the relativities in pay that are here and how we want to go forward with those, not make a decision tonight about pay raises. I think pay raises we should discuss at our at our January meeting. How did you how did you get a copy of that? I couldn't download it. I couldn't get a copy. Anyway. Dorinda sent it and I printed it. I couldn't print mine. I just couldn't print it. Anyway, that's I've I've got it on my little tiny um iPhone. I'm going to send an IT consultant over to visit you with you, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a really good idea. <laughs> anyway, I don't know. I don't know why you're something's got to be wacky that you're unable to print this stuff because everybody else seems to be able to print it. So I don't know what the issue is. But anyway. So with that, with that, Dorinda, uh, you want to lead us through this? What? How are we going to? proceed with us? Well, I basically, I just listed all the positions, what the current rate is. Um, the spreadsheet, as I said, just shows a 2% placeholder there. Um, and so the spreadsheet, when you work with it, will just automatically calculate your taxes and your workers comp and all of that. So it's just every time you make a change, that's what it's going to cost you. The bigger thing is you know, um, we, if you're gonna replace the bookkeeper that you currently have, you know, I think you need to go from the 2122 and forget about the 2% increase and figure out what number is gonna go in there. Right. Um, and I think that holds true with, um, if you plan on changing any, you know, um, person that, you know, if you're going to look at what they're doing. The other thing that's included in here is I also put in um, the number of hours that they're budgeted for. So maybe, you know, the pay's okay, but you would need to increase or decrease the budgeted hours. Um, but this is how it's all based on and has been based on. Yep. So what we really, uh, and I think that's exactly it in a nutshell. I mean, what we wanted, what we wanted to look at rather than just say, okay, everybody gets a raise is first of all, figure out whether the hours, whether the hours are appropriate. And second of all, we've got to design some kind of pro forma uh, for our financial person and potentially potentially a pro forma for a road commissioner position that we're not really prepared to uh, to talk about tonight we, we will be in uh, we will be in January but our you know what we're what we're looking at here is a compensation system where uh, many of our, many of our employees have just been getting you know incremental incremental raises and a lot of them just have sort of a kind of standard rate that we've been living with for a long time and does that make does that make sense or doesn't it make sense or do we want to move it around um obviously the 
the heavy money is is all in the uh, uh, the full time or almost full time uh, employees. But I would say, first of all, overall, the compensation is is suspect on the potentially on the inadequate side, unfortunately. And in some cases, um, we've limited the hours and many people are putting in a lot of volunteer time, which is never intended or really, uh, really fair because they can't get their job done in the, in the time allowed. And uh, with the exception of the road crew, I think almost everybody else to one degree or another is, is putting in, is putting in volunteer time. So I don't know how we attack this. I don't know what we're, uh, what we're thinking. Uh, any thoughts? <laughs> Great. Would it help? Would it help if I go away so you guys can talk freely about uh, the full-time employee who's sitting here? No, <laughs> not for me, Sarah. I'm I, everything I have to say. You're more than welcome to hear. No, I I don't think that that's a problem. I think we. Well, I think the way we have to approach this is, what do we want to do? Do we want to talk about an overall increase? Do we want to single out the bookkeeper and or the road commissioner? And if so we should start with the bookkeeper. When I look at these, the, the estimated um, time of our current bookkeeper is 625 hours. Is that twice a week, Dorinda or Sarah or whoever knows? It varies. Okay. Uh, that's not per week, that's per year. No, no, I understand that. Um, and that is, I mean, at times it's like two days a week. Um, other times when you're getting into end of year, um, tax time, things like that, it could be more. I mean, that's just a, you know, so it's like there is, that's one of the things that we would like to see with the new bookkeeper that they're in the office for set hours and you know that we know the bookkeeper is always going to be there you know monday wednesday friday or monday through wednesday or whatever the days are and whatever the hours right. are um but these are just you know and i think it's true for any um other than the full-time employees the hours are pretty much they work the hours that they need to work to get the job done well, I mean, what I would tell you is it seems to me the parameters when we're talking about a bookkeeper range from the 625 that we now currently have to 816, which is what Sarah works, which is 32 hours. And for two days a week, we have the assistant clerk and he's putting in 700. So do we want someone two days a week or four half days? And okay, for First of all, Sarah is 816 plus 848. So that is not. Full time is, full -time is 1664. That's 32 uh -huh. hours a week times 52 weeks. Right, but uh, it's broken out in two categories. So uh, it's I, know, I, understand, I understand, but I'm just saying if you're looking at truly what for us is a full time person, it's right. 1,664 hours. Uh, right, so. exactly. Okay. Well, then the question is, do we want to go from 625 to 700 for two days a week or four mornings a week or four afternoons a week? I mean, Hold on. I don't think that's enough. Like 600, it's 700 hours. I mean, like, do you think 25 hours a week is too much, Dorinda, for the bookkeeper job if to extend it to this greater grants administrator and all that? I think a lot of it's going to depend on, if you look at the ad we drew up, we, we initially came up with 24 to 30 hours a week. Once you go to 32 hours a week, and I'm not begrudging anybody this, but you then get into the benefit side. Right. Of it. So we started out hoping we could get somebody for 24 to 30 hours a week. The problem's going to be is if you're going to find a qualified person, 
or if you have really got to go the full time route and to get the person you need. Um, so that's so our take in our meeting that we had uh, with Phil and Sarah and myself was we said, let's put together this basic ad looking for everything we want, throw it out there, see what kind of response we get. And um, so that was kind of where we were starting from for you to look at this and think, say, yes, that's what we're looking for. I think then the person would come back and say, um, I need this much money in order to do it. And that's how much gonna... do they need? Like what, what, what's a reasonable hourly rate for a bookkeeper for municipal stuff? 25? Well, okay. I, I I don't know. I mean, I I have to be honest with you. I really don't know what the municipal bookkeepers, a lot of them are tied in as clerk, treasurer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're not necessarily separated, but you're also looking for somebody to handle grants. So you're throwing that in there as well, which may or not, may not be what a normal bookkeeper does. It, it, I'm sorry, go ahead, um, Liz. Liz. I was just gonna say, I, I would think, you know, I'm just thinking about like our finance people at Capstone nonprofit. You know, I think that they're making, like we have a grants administrator. My guess is she's making between like 55 and 60, which is like 25 an hour, right? So, I mean, I think that's a reasonable amount of money that seems, you know, of course, she gets benefits and stuff. So this is someone who's just flat out getting twenty five an hour. Um, but if you if you're doing twenty five an hour for twenty five hours a week, that's like thirty two five or something. Um, is this is is what we would have to budget, which is um, you know twenty a little over twenty thousand dollars more than what's in the budget now. So uh, you guys, I just want to direct your attention to the ad for the town of to the town of Barry ad that was circulating around here. So there, that's a full time position. And granted, it's Barry, um, it's the town of Barry, not the city of Barry, and that's a full time job, and that's seventy to seventy five thousand dollars. But that's also, I mean, they have a population of eight thousand versus us, which is a population of eighteen hundred. So it's different. Yeah, and I think yeah, but it's still a full time job doing the same kind of work. So, well, that was that was more of a financial director yeah. position, I oh. believe, or it, a financial it's pretty, manager. It's pretty heavy duty, and it requires you know some advanced degrees and right. five yeah. years. You know, so it's not. I, it's kind of above what I think the town is looking for. Right. But, but anyway, that would be the maximum. It seems to me. All right, I'll get out of here. Did, did the town um, just? say they wanted to get a finance manager too, or I, I remember reading about one town and I didn't think it was Barry Town. Barry Town is much, much bigger. I don't, they've been ads in this in seven days and uh, there's been stuff going back and forth. Amy's been keeping track of it. And she said that the, um, you know, they've had some, she suggests that we advertise this in seven days because it's much more, it's a much better read classified section than the Times Argus. Well, even if it's 27 an hour, it's 35,000 a year. So, you know, we are talking about what we've already budgeted, which is which is 13,000 adding another, you know, 22,000 into this spreadsheet that you've that you've done. So, here's here's all I I have to say on this and I am really uh I am really conflicted on this because this is a potential budget buster, I think. But I just think I am I am all for I, I like the approach of casting our, our our net out and seeing what kind of fish we get in the net. I think that's gonna answer a lot of these questions. I really do. But if I was if I was looking for what the ideal person would be. It would be somebody in something like half time, but full time. In other words, four mornings a week. So town people would know that they could reach this person during our normal business hours in the morning, any day. Right. Now, I, I, that to me is important. So uh, 
whatever the hours are, if it's, if it's less than the full 32 hours, all I'm saying is I understand why somebody might say, well, I can do that job in, in two and a half days, so I want to work right. Monday and Tuesday until noon on Wednesday. I, that is not what I'm looking for. I mean, who knows what we'll be able to get, but having somebody there when the office is open at least a good part of the day on those days to me is important. And I guess the other thing is, you know, I want to be sure, really sure, and I believe Dorinda feels the same way and hopefully others do, that we need a person who can really do this job in a responsible way. And yes, they may need a little training on the vagaries of municipal accounting if they don't have municipal experience, but I want a real accountant, somebody who understands accounting, somebody you can talk to the auditor in the language she understands, uh, someone who can prepare reports for the, for the select board, take some of this stuff off to Rinda, which she really shouldn't be doing, um, and at the same time grow into the grant administration position. So, you know, who knows, who knows what we're gonna get, but for this, for at least this phase of the budget discussion, I'd like to put a good chunk of money in there. And I think, I think, and I don't know if we put in the benefits or not, you know, to get the right person, we might have to pay benefits. But, you know, that isn't necessarily the end of the world either. If we get the right Peter, person. Peter, it's, it's Paul. May I, may I just jump in here for a second? Yes. Um, I just, I just want to kind of, I don't know, lay some groundwork to, to let everyone know to not, not expect a unicorn to pop out with you know with regards to maybe some some restrictions with hours or or set times um i think we all know how hard it is to to find good qualified applicants you know and and having someone who's who's qualified in order to be able to do this it, it may be a tough stretch to expect only you know either half days or or two days or something to that degree with with that kind of responsibility um, and you never know what you could, you know, ask, ask of that person to, to alleviate pressure off of, off of other administrators uh, in the town role too, uh, you know, maybe to justify a position that's, that's worthy of either more money or, or more or closer to the full-time um, spectrum. Yep. Yep. Well, I think, unfortunately, in a way, we're putting the cart before the horse because we don't know what, we don't know who we can get for candidates. Hopefully, we'll know more. The ad is the ad is in the paper now. No, we that's for you guys to look at tonight and approve. That's what you're looking for, and um, and then we will get it published ASAP. Well, look, do you have something to look at? We've sent it out. Sent out. Yep. Uh, this Mute uh, yourself, whoever that is, please. I just, I think it's Bill. I just uh, muted him. Okay, thank you. Um, so, when did you, Dorinda, when did you send it out? I want to look it up. I sent it out. Oh, uh, Sarah. Uh, let me, I'll send it out again. Mary, just hold on. It probably was Wednesday or Thursday. We met Wednesday, right? I okay. sent it out. I think I sent it out Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. Well, so Thursday would have been. That's okay, Mary. I've got it. I can just, uh, I got it. I just, if you just hold on, I can just go into my folder and send it and just send it again. Thank you. It sounded fine to me as a starting uh, as a starting thing. Okay. But all I'm all I'm saying is when we meet in when we meet in January, and I don't have the January calendar. When when is our first meeting in January, Sarah? I think it's like the fifth. I just um... yep. Uh, all the cal all the twenty twenty one calendars are back ordered. It's driving me nuts. Um, Tuesday the fifth, right? Yeah. Tuesday the fifth. Okay, yeah. thank you. Um, I mean, by then we should have at least some initial response from the ad. Is all I'm saying, and that'll that'll at the very least 
drive some of this uh, discussion forward. Ultimately, ultimately, from a budget point of view, we just have to cinch the belt around our throats and throw a bunch of money in there and mm -hmm. and see how it all comes out. I mean, we're not gonna we're not gonna have the we're we're not definitely not gonna have this person hired, let alone really have our arms around what the final job description is gonna be by the time we have to have the budget in. No, something we talked about was our goal was to get the ad out, see what we got for a response. And ideally, we'd love to see him come on board for March. Right. You know, something like that was our kind of our goal. Yep. And be ready to be ready to take on the job single handed by June 1st or July 1st. Right. Or whenever. I mean, uh, Amy is Amy is ready to go anytime we're ready to have her go, right? Well, she more or less said she was willing to stay on through um, through the end of the current, you know, the fiscal year. Um, but I haven't really had a discussion that if we got somebody and got them up to speed ahead of time, if she, you know, was ready to go early or not. But that was the date she gave me. Right. You know. Well, I just don't discussion. think I just don't think we need more than a couple of months of overlap. So, right. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you feel differently about that. I don't know. No, the problem that we had when she was doing the training was you had a bookkeeper who was working, um, you know, again certain hours. They couldn't coordinate hours. They one would be available one day, the one wouldn't. Even though we started um, Amy, like, I think three or four months in advance, I don't think she even ended up with two weeks worth of training when all was said and done because Patty right. went to Florida and all of that. Right. And a lot's going to depend upon what kind of experience. They have. Yeah, right. so that's, that's exactly. what I kind of thought. We just got to cast a net out there and see who shows up, mm, you know. And this may not be enough to entice somebody. I don't know. Right. What did you say in the in the letter in terms of salary, or did you say salary salary commensurate with? Uh, Didn't say anything about it. You know, just you're, that. You're. I keep trying to send it to you, and it keeps bouncing back. So I don't know what's going on. Yeah, you said the other day that you couldn't get an email to me, uh, Sarah. To you, to, to you, to Liz, and to Lowry. Yeah, something's got to be wrong with your email. But send it to other people. I know, but I'm getting all my email. You're the only person who tells me you can't get me email. Anyway, that's a different subject. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm looking back trying to find Thursday and I find the agenda and I find all this stuff, but I don't find the one about the letter. Well, okay, I'm sending, I just sent it to you again. Let's see if this goes through one more time. But we did not address salary. We more or less wanted to see what we got for response and then you know, kind of see where we landed with it. Um, I just think we wanted to find, we need to just plug in a number, what we're willing to do, I guess. I got this, Sarah. Okay, good. So uh, I'm gonna suggest, I'm gonna suggest, and I, I consider it very much a plug number, but I also consider it an aggressive number that we plug in 50,000. Okay. Well, we might as well start high because when we want to cut, yeah. we can right there. <laughs> okay. So we'll put that in and then that I'll, I'll work with the numbers to make the hourly rate and four days a week or something like that. We want to keep under full time or how do you want to approach that? I would say our initial goal would be to keep it under full time, but okay. you know, if, if all of a sudden, I mean, I, I know, I know this isn't supposed to be legal, but the fact of the matter is it happens all the time. If you need to hire somebody with benefits, guess what? The hourly rate needs to be a little lower, but they get benefits. Right. You just gotta be careful how you say it. Very careful. Right. But if we put that, so I could put in 50,000, so you want 50,000 without benefits is, yes. or with benefits? Without. Without, okay. And I'm just throwing that number out. Do people think that's too aggressive? Maybe it is. No. 
I want to make sure we get a good person. Yep. So I think that takes care of that question for tonight. The, the second question, which is the, which is the road commissioner thing, um, I, I hate to say between the devil and the deep blue sea, but there's, there's all kinds of stuff potentially going on on the road commissioner front. You know, are there, are there as much as we've had select board members in the past who have always been, been willing to do this job as a volunteer, is it possible to find somebody in town who would continue to do that job as a volunteer? I don't know. Peter, may I interrupt? Yes. Squire, what was our conversation last week after the meeting? What did I tell you? I think you're being a little disingenuous. What did I tell you in the spring? After me, what did I? No. Go what ahead, did, Victor. Go what ahead, did I tell? You? What did I tell you? You indicated that you might be interested in doing it. No, I told you I would, and I told you well, I'd do it for nothing. Yep. No, I I heard you. Okay. That's why I'm. That's why I'm saying what I'm. What I'm saying. Um. Well, I also son, heard from your you son. Find somebody who told me the same. Told me the same thing. That's right. <laughs> So anyway, I think for the time being, we leave that one alone is what I'm suggesting. All right. Yeah. Victor, I, did hear you, I did hear you loud and clear. I don't, I just. Uh, what is it? Just what? What is it, Peter? What, what is, what's holding you up? I mean, from being, I mean, being transparent, that's all. That's all I'm asking. I'm sorry, say that again, please. I was just wondering, what's, what's holding you up from being transparent? Nothing's holding me up from being transparent. Okay. Well, you said nobody. You know, I didn't know if it was appropriate for me to say right now that you and I have had that discussion, but I think that's. See, that's I did say I did things... say that there was a potential for a vol for a volunteer to do the job. Right. No, I think there's a lot of things, and and uh, and Randy Drury said this last week that there's a lot of things that are talked about out of these meetings that should be talked about in these meetings. There's a lot of things that are decided behind closed doors and uh, that's not like, true. Well, I disagree well, with, with that statement, Victor. Other convers I have conversations with people all the time and I don't, I don't necessarily tell the select board what all the conversations are and I don't expect them to tell me. I, I wasn't trying to, I, what I, all I was trying to say is that we have not made the decision about how we're going to go forward with this road commissioner position. Now, but do all the rest of the select board people know that? Know what? The, our conversation? First time. Oh, they know, they know. Not right. So how can they make a decision if they don't know, Peter? Victor, Victor, I'm not trying not. to give you a hard time. No, 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 I'm not trying to give you a hard time, but I just well, you sound like you're giving me a hard time because you're sounding like I should have brought up the brought up you offering to do the job as a volunteer. And I brought it up. I just didn't mention your name. And uh, and Vic, I think what it really is, is um, is is more about sort of letting things shake out a little bit and see, you know, what's we have not had any kind of conversations outside of this meeting about um around anything related to the road foreman except that we know that, that there is road no we we let, let me finish we know that steve is not the road foreman and so um and, Wait, and you keep point, saying road foreman it's i'm road sorry I, I know my husband gets me so mad about that it's not the road foreman it's a road commissioner i'm sorry i take that back everything i just said should have been road commissioner um, that the road commissioner, um, you know, is not Steve and that, you know, Peter's acting in this, this position right now, but that it's my understanding and correct me if I'm wrong, Peter, is that we as a select board, it would be, you know, some discussion that we had as a select board about how we move forward with the, the road um, commissioner. Um, and so we haven't gotten that far, Vic, in terms of, you know, having a discussion as a group about how we envision this. Um, many towns, the road commissioner is the road foreman. There, I said that right. Um, 
that might be a, a route that we take. That's the way it was in the past um, with us. And um, so I think that we're sort of, you know, letting, you know, uh, just allowing ourselves to have some time to, to process how we want to have it go forward. And I think that if we do make a decision about who is going to be our road commissioner, we want to ensure that that person is someone who um, who obviously knows the town really well, knows roads well, gets along well with with the community members, and um, and 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 can work well with um, with the the, the staff um, who are our road crew. Um, so all of those things get you know even if it's a volunteer, that doesn't necessarily mean we're just going to choose the first person who says, "Hi, I'll do it." Like we we there's parameters around who that person is. You might be the right person. I have no idea. Your son might be the right person. You know, Paul Sermonera might be the right person. I don't know who the right person is. I know. I'm not the right person because I know nothing about roads. So I just want to let you know, Vic, this isn't some conspiracy like, oh, we don't want Vic. We haven't even had this conversation, um, what, what our next steps are. Let me, no, I wasn't let me just, hold, on, that. hold on one second, Victor. Let me just say one other thing to be clear. And again, to be totally transparent, the, the, the concept we discussed was that um, assuming we did not have a road commissioner in place for January 4th, which is almost tomorrow, that Steve would resign as of January 4th, which is Shane's first day. So I am not the acting road commissioner now. Is there a chance that I might be for some period of time in January? Yes, but not yet. Okay. I understand that, Peter, and, and in no way am I trying to, uh, to uh, push uh, Steve out and... Uh, or, or anything like that. It's just that uh, from what I understood is uh, because of the fact uh, that he is, it's been explained to me because he's uh, Shane's father, he can't uh, be the, uh, the road commissioner and be instructing him on what to do because uh, that's against town policy and that's fine. Well, it is, it is, but that doesn't, that doesn't happen until Shane becomes an employee, which is, right which right. is uh, January, January 4th. So anyway, Victor, I'm sorry if I, if I uh, uh, got you upset, I didn't mean to, and I, I appreciate it. No, I'm not it. upset, it's just, uh, yeah, it's not upset. Uh, uh, I uh, had a conversation with Matt in between and uh, I reserved from saying anything when you said if there's any more, if anybody wants to say anything, because uh, I was uh, gonna let it, uh, you know, filter out like uh, like Liz said but uh, you know my son said that uh, uh, we or I had a converse you know talk with him and uh, that uh, it would be appropriate for me to uh, you know uh, speak up so I've spoke up Victor you're always welcome to speak up thank you yeah. you've never been shy before Victor either <laughs> yeah that's one of my good character qualities <laughs> But anyway, All right. All right. Getting thank back, you. I'm getting back to the subject. Getting back to the subject at hand, I am proposing that we not, at this point in time, consider putting money in our budget for the road commissioner position. I don't think we're ready to do that. That's all I'm saying. Okay, I agree with that. So, okay. the next thing I think we wanted to talk about, which is maybe not necessarily, I mean, it is definitely germane to the budget, but in a way it isn't germane to the budget. And that is just the whole methodology we have for paying people, how we determine what their rate of pay is, how we adjust their, adjust their rate of pay over time. Um, our practice for a long time has been when we hire somebody, whether it's a member of the road crew or a select board assistant or uh, somebody who gets appointed or elected a lister or whoever that there's initial initial rate of pay that gets set and then we give uh, basically across the board increases over time and that's what we've done for quite a while and you know I think in doing that uh, some of our some of our rates of pay may be 
may be out of whack, maybe not, but maybe, maybe they are. And I think part of this was to have a discussion about two things. Number one, if the hours allowed are correct, which we know in many cases they're not because people are working way more hours. And then if the hours are correct or we adjust the hours, then does the rate of pay need to be adjusted? Um, hello, can I just say, didn't two years ago we have a, um, a real soul searching, so to speak, about salaries and we actually raised them and it was an, it was like, wow, the salaries are now, you know, 15% higher than they were last year. So we did recently, you know, I think adjust our hours, like the listers and stuff to be more market hours two years ago. Um, last year, wasn't it? Or even last year. But, but I think more to the point is, are the hours that we have allotted them, not the pay per se, but the number of hours that we've allotted them, are they sufficient for, for the job that we're asking them to do? Um, isn't I think it's both, Liz. Okay. I think it's both. Well, I, mean, I just want to say we did address it, and I want to have oh, that no, on we the did, record. We, we did, but we did last year. We did all. I, all I'm saying is we did a. We said okay, we're going to increase the, everybody on the road crew up so much. We never said, you know, one member of the road crew is working harder than the other member of the road crew, putting an extra time doing this and that deserves a different rate of pay. We no. just said we'll we give the whole that road the, crew. Yeah, no. What you did was you raised all part-timers up to a minimum of $20 an hour. Yes. It was straight across the board right. that if they didn't work full-time, they got 20 bucks an hour. Yes. And right. that was what happened. Okay. Um, and that was like at least two years ago because at the, these part-timers are now at 21, 22 an hour. So it had to have been at least two to three years ago. Okay. Right. That was a result of just inflationary increases after we went to the 20. Yep. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. Does right. Our, um, right. Do we have merit? Um, like, I don't think we do have any kind of merit that's built into like our overhead, right? No. Well, uh, and I can, and I can tell you, um, as much as I love the concept of merit pay, trying to decide who gets the merit pay and who doesn't is an unbelievable challenge and it's scary. Yep. And every time I've tried to do it in my own, in my own businesses, it's always turned out to be a nightmare. No matter, you can, you can do evaluation worksheets, you can do checkoffs, you can do, it basically comes down to who thinks somebody's doing a better job than somebody else. Well, what yeah. about then bonuses? Yeah, but bonuses. We've never done, yeah. we've never done differential bonuses either for the same reason. Yeah. We did a bonus have, once recently. We have a policy on that too, Liz. Don't you remember we have a bonus and it's. No, no sorry. Right. Never mind. It's in WEC. It was okay. like I was going to say, we did give bonuses one year when we had a tough winter where there was no winter. And I believe we gave them bonuses because of uh, a lack of overtime. Right. right. It, but again, that was a. That was an across the board thing to the road crew. Right. I mean, we've done we've done all kinds of things over the years, but what we've never done is look at individuals and say, this is somebody who should be rewarded versus this other person who's doing a, a, a good average job, but they're not doing an exceptional job. And and I'm scared to think we would try and do that. I'm just I'm just throwing it out there. Well, Peter, I mean, for instance, just, just for example, and, and, you know, don't get me wrong. I do not focus that much on the part-timers. I'm not saying, I'm not saying that their compensation isn't an important part of their family income or however you look at it. But the people I worry about are the, are primarily the full-timers. And then we've got people in between who are maybe not full-time, but that's basically what they do. And that's, and anyway, I don't know. But I mean, for instance, you know, so, so here we are, the select yeah. board, 662 or 827 a year. That works out to about 15 cents an hour for me. Do we think that's fair? 
Of course we I would do. like a big fat raise, please. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, so we're not worried for... about the, we're not worried about the select board. We 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 get what we get. Um, oh, why this isn't working? Or at least I'm not worried about the select board. No, I'm not worried about it. I'm not either. Yeah. In terms, well, of, really in terms of the road crew, Steve's, Steve's feedback is that um, we're better, but we're still not where we need to be, both in terms of comparing ourselves to other towns and certainly comparing ourselves to the, to the private uh, workplace. It's been interesting talking to these people we've been trying to hire you know, and, and this has been my experience over the years. People basically don't value the benefits. Like, you know, look at what we contribute to the retirement. Now people say, oh yeah, that's good, you know, but I'd rather, I'd rather work for a contractor who pays me $35 an hour in the summer and I cut wood in the wintertime, you know, and I have no benefits. That's a problem. Yeah, it's a problem all over for people that they don't Especially if it's a younger um, group of people that you're hiring, they don't. The benefits don't mean much. So, Peter, what are you leading up to? You're leading up to we need to do some. Well, kind of I, 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 I think we need to think about this. I was, I was in such a such a blue mood after our last uh, discussion that I was ready to say, you know, in light of the pandemic and everything else. A 2% raise is a pretty damn good raise at this point in time. And this isn't the year to be doing anything special or spending any extra money, especially when we're going to be spending some money on that financial person. The more I think about it, the more I think that might not be right for, for relatively small money. Um, we can make people feel better about working for the town and, and pay fair wages. But it's a little, I don't think we should, I'm not suggesting at all that we finalize any of this tonight. Um, I mean, we can ask Dorinda to, to put in some plug numbers so we can compare at our January meeting, but it's really at the January meeting where we really need to decide about this. And I really hope by then we'll have a better idea uh, on the financial person. Well, and I would just, you know, also caution that, you know, we're, um, we're, we're offering our foreman <laughs> <laughs> a specific, you know, hourly rate. And if you raise the crew members, you know, there, there's got to be a strong enough incentive for someone to be a foreman. And if it's only, you know, a dollar an hour more, that might, you know, then we'd have to adjust everything else. So there has to be well, like... Right. I, I have been presuming as much as we've never really finalized it or discussed, discussed it, that whatever raise the road crew gets, our foreman would get the same raise, even if he's only been here okay. a short period of time. I mean, we need to maintain that differential, I agree. Well, how about so the I don't people? Know where that, I don't know where that leaves us Leaves us for tonight. I don't think we've we've satisfied Dorinda with what she was looking for. Should we, should we at least look at the hours and see if they make sense? Well, I, I think it's a combination of everything, you know. Um, I think the road crew is, I mean, they're in for full time and they're in for budgeted for 225 hours overtime. I think that's consistently worked. I don't, you know, I don't think they've ever, and if they go over budget, they go over budget. So I think that's a pretty good number. Um, that's why I sent you that sheet uh, the week before at the last meeting or before the last meeting, as far as showing how each department was, you know, leveled out. Pretty much they, um, like the different commissions, like your, um, your rec department, your rec person, your zoning person, they submitted how many hours that they felt they needed to do their job. So if that's what they think they need to do their job, then those numbers are in the budget. Same thing with the listers. They provided those hours to me, not, you know, that's not hours that I created. So that's obviously what they thought they needed for hours. Um, so, you know, I just think the biggest ones were, you know, um, 
how many hours you really want to give the accounting department because that that seems to be where there was a shortfall and um if you're going to put in hours for you know which the uh road commissioner then that should be in there and the one other thing while we're talking about budget is um i think there needs to be line item plugged in for all these uh grants we're going after because there's no uh we're you know we have a six thousand dollar match for one grant that's not in the budget we have you know another 900 for another grant that's not in the budget right. so these are all unbudgeted items that don't get put into the budget ever no, all we need time. to put them in there we definitely do yeah Dorinda, could you explain again why the um the collector of delinquent taxes is 2781 versus the zoning is wasn't he going to be both the zoning administrator and the collector of delinquent no who's the collector of delinquent taxes i can't remember that, that's uh dave smith that's the, and, the, and assist, why the assistant okay, okay so what happened there was um they when originally when i came on board i was doing both the um the treasurer's position and the collector of delinquent taxes. Then when you guys came with this $20 an hour rate for all part-timers, oh. um, with the exception, you did it with the exception of the treasurer. My pay for the delinquent tax collector got dropped down to $20 an hour from what the rate was that I was earning. Then Sarah brought it up at one of the meetings that she didn't think that was right. And then when the rate got put back on, it got put back on at the wrong rate, but it didn't matter because I didn't care. And so that's how it got there. That was what I was earning for that position when I got done and that's how the new person took over. Okay. In other words, it was a little bit haphazard. <laughs> Just a little. Yeah, but you know, that rate for doing that job is. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not that much of a. Um, it, it's not a lot of hours, but let me tell you, it's a very thankless job. job. Yeah, it's an unhappy job. It's an um, unhappy job. Okay. Um, so what you're saying is the hours are what each of the people think they need to do their jobs. For, for how they. Um, they're the, they submit their own budgets, the different, part you know, the part, for the most part, that's what the part timers submitted. Um, and I believe how, and I, Sarah may have a little more insight on this, but when the treasurer clerk position got broken up, I think what happened there was somebody guided you guys into the fact that the clerk needed 32 hours and the treasurer got eight hours or something like that. Uh, no, just when I got the job, they said, the select board said they wanted me to work 32 hours, which was great. That's okay. what I wanted to do. Okay. Well, I think well, then, one, however that went, but that was when it got divided up. So I think said, they took your 32 and the other eight because it was 40 before. Right, and just to be clear, the delinquent to cl tax collector stuff, and you, you it used to be the trustee of public funds, which was a, a stupid, it, was a, it, was a, it meant nothing, and uh, and that's what was Cindy was. So when you got hired, you said you would wanted to get what Cindy, the rate Cindy got, and that's what that's also what Cindy was getting for zoning administrator as well. So I mean, she was she was getting up there. She was about twenty seven dollars an hour. So between zoning administrator, treasurer, clerk, um, collector of delinquent taxes, trustee of public funds, she had a whole bunch of jobs at twenty seven dollars an hour. Right. And Which it was her who's it was her who suggested what right. my rate would have paid would be not so I came we're in. just kind of we're still feeling the after effects of that. Right. Exactly. But that's how they all arrived. So you know, at the number of hours. History. So so what Dorinda is a two percent across the board increase based on the additional uh position. That's built into this. Oh, you don't have the spreadsheet, Mary. It's built into the spreadsheet. I know. I just, I just wondered if she had the figure. 
because I'm I have to move through mine. Well, I don't have with this new uh, person in it because I haven't. Um, oh, I could update that. Let me try this. Um, uh, let me see if I can do this. I mean, it may only be like four thousand dollars or something like that. It's a small amount, right? The difference in the bookkeeper? No, you're going from no, 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 um, no, 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 the two percent. Yeah. 2% increase across the board. Well, that's in that spreadsheet. So you're talking, so I didn't, that number is in there right now. That is that number on the spreadsheet. So whatever, let me come out of this. Um, yeah, I'm just looking for it and I. So total wage, well, it's by department. I don't have it broken out, you know, like, um, the highway department is almost $223,000. The zoning is $7,000. The uh, collector of delinquent taxes is $2,800. The listers are $30,300. I mean, I don't know, I don't have them totaled as to what all wages come out to. Actually, I do three hundred and fifty eight thousand two hundred and forty five dollars. And what is it now? What's the number now? Well, that's what I don't have. That's proposed with the two percent. I don't have. Oh, yeah, I've got the three. Yeah, I found the three fifty eight. But yeah. if you take if you take two percent, two percent away from, you know, one percent, it'd be three thousand dollars. Two percent, it'd be seven thousand right. dollars, roughly. Right. No, it's not, you know. I'm sorry, I missed that. My son tried calling me. So what was the what was the amount, of Peter? It's it's seven thousand dollars for one percent. Okay. Round I mean that's rounded off. That's in my head calculating, but that's pretty close. So you know, that's thirty five hundred dollars for thirty five hundred dollars for one percent. So if we went from we went from 2% to 3%, that's $3,500 if I'm doing the math right. Is that right, Dorinda? I think you, so. Right, yeah. Yeah, it is. So we're not talking about a lot of money. It's the, it's, the, it's the principle of the thing and it's trying to pay fair wages for the work these people are doing. But again, I, I am not ready tonight to propose that we, we, finalize, we finalize that number. I mean, the one, the one thing we know for real and true is we're going to be putting a bunch more money into the accounting into the accounting department, no matter how we do it. And the road commissioner thing is an open uh, is an open question. All right. So what I'll do at this point is I will plug in a number into the bookkeeper position. I will add in line items for all of these grants. And I will send out. Um, I will send out the uh, a new update to everybody. Sounds good. Awful, no. awful silent. Anything from the budget committee on any of this stuff, guys? No, not till we really, not till we see the final numbers. I saw. I saw George shaking his bottle of Tums for the tummy. That made me a little nervous. <laughs> no, I was just drinking water. <laughs> Should have something stronger. <laughs> and well in a after minute. the meeting, that's after the meeting. I think making sure you're paying people good money is really important. You know, yeah, I, I would agree. Yeah. Me too. Here, here. Hey, we could, we could, we could pay them like the school pays their employees. You want to see some wages? Look at what they pay. Benefits I like. We better not go there. <laughs> hey, listen, I would not want to be there teaching those masked children right now. I can tell you that. I can tell you I wouldn't want to be out in the woods at the outdoor classroom when it's 17 degrees. Me neither. <laughs> I, I'll give the teachers whatever they can to keep those kids in school <laughs> so parents can work. I agree, Liz. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I've got a teacher sitting right across from me here in the room. I got to be careful what I say. You do. <laughs> okay so are we is that good with the budget stuff or mm -hmm. 
we got this. I'm, I'm not sure we we got something from the from the solid waste rascals. I haven't even looked at it. I printed it out, but I didn't look at it. Yeah, I've got their number. So we're all set for as far as the budget goes, but. So uh, I know that it may be out of order, but I just got an email saying that the contract with the school and Washington Electric is a five-year contract and it hasn't expired yet. No, it expires at the end of the year, I think, according to that letter. Right? I, don't, I don't know. Well, they're I'm not going to take it out before de 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 December 31st. It's not going to be removed. Right. It's not being used, so it's not costing anybody anything. And I know that the usage was being paid by the PTO. It wasn't even being paid by the school. Right. We tabled it. Yeah. We tabled it. Let's yeah. not come back into that. Uh, are we done with the budget? Where do I, I, we I, are I, as far as we can go tonight, unless, unless huh? anybody else has anything else they want to uh, discuss. Well, I, I missed the last part because my computer died and I had to run and get my phone. So, so <laughs> where where are we at? Did we do make I any? What happened to you? <laughs> yeah, that's what happened to me. Okay. We didn't make any decisions, Phil. Nothing. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna Dorinda's gonna send out a revised sheet. Right. Um, we determined that. 1% of pay for everybody across the board is about $7,000 just for shit. Okay. Change. Without the new position. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Right, 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 right. Without the new position. Correct. So if we cut everybody's pay 3%, we could pay for the new position. <laughs> but the, so, and also though, the $7,000 does not take into consideration taxes or benefits because every time you raise- It's probably more like, right. It's probably right. more like-, like Right, because like you're- Something like that, yeah. Right. You have the municipal retirement, you have, you know, workers comp, that all comes into play. Yep. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. That's about, isn't that generally about three fifths, maybe even more of the salary of the, of the full-time employees? Three, on what? All the benefits. Um, no, because you only, you only have five in full-time employees. So you can't really just take three fifths of the total budget. No, three fifths of their salary. Right, but you only have uh, this whole budget is for the whole town. It's not so you can't really just say that's what your benefits are because you only have five people receiving. Yeah, like well, retirement. Is, somebody earned fifty three thousand dollars. If you took three fifths of that, that would be the benefits. That's I just, think that's high. I think that's way high. high. Yeah, that's pretty high. Okay. I mean, it depends. The big, the big. The big factor is whether they need health insurance or not, Mary. That makes right. a big difference. Yeah, of course. Right. But there are only there are only five people who get retirement. And anyway, the benefits are expensive, yes, but we think three fifths is high. But anyway, are we all set for tonight then? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. If we are, I'm gonna say that we're concluding our budget discussion for not for tonight. I'm gonna put those uh Pages aside. Thank you, budget, Thank you committee. budget committee. Okay. Budget committee, I'll be in touch about this capital spending plan. I've got a bail. I can do that. Work on that too. Oh, Liz. good. Good, Mary. Have a good night. So, um, we are we are moving down then to other business. Dorinda had her hand up. Yep, Dorinda. I, I just have to leave. So I oh. was supposed to be someplace a while ago. I thought you were volunteering for the uh, the capital spending plan committee. No, 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 no. no I, I, I need to go to my other meeting. So oh, okay. I, I'm out of here. <laughs> the ice cubes are melting in her drink. Not quite, but. <laughs> anyway, thanks, right. Dorinda. Good night. Yeah. Bye. Okay, so we've got a few items here under other business.
Uh, one is considering the Middlesex Energy, Energy Committee, excuse me, request that its five page handout on, on building with energy efficiency be included with any approved town building permit action likely. I move we approval. We agreed to that. We just couldn't take any action because it was right. an important item. So I move approval of that. I'll second. Okay. Did someone second? I'm sorry. I, I did. Oh, thank Phil. you. Thank you, Phil. Um, so we are we are voting on the motion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Okay. How do you won? You can tell. You can tell Larry. He's, he's good. so happy. <laughs> so the I other can't... thing, you know, the the other thing I would suggest is <coughs> that maybe we amend that a little bit and hand it out to anybody who applies for a building permit. Oh, good idea. Let's yeah. amend. Not just get it. Get it. Let it. Get it right there out front. Yeah. Okay. I, I accept group. that amendment. Yeah, me too. Okay. Yeah. Can I make a? comment from the public i joined you to just because i want to herald lowry's leadership and work on this this grew out of the enhanced energy plan the energy committee and you probably know this but i <laughs> calling in specifically to recognize his leadership Aww. and corral yeah. no but really corralling the people meeting i i was teaching a class i couldn't attend but this product is excelsior and i think maybe we even have a chance to share it with other towns in due course so i want to thank the select board but uh, just go on the record uh, on behalf of Lowry Scharf. Shar Why, thank you. And lobster, lobster for dinner, Liz. Well, I'm not <laughs> cooking tonight. <laughs> no, it's really great work. Thanks so okay. much for approving. Yeah, I'll it. let him know. Thank nice you. of you. To, nice of you to say that. Yeah, thank you. I agree thank with you all. Really I, I read that. it over carefully again after our last meeting, and I, I liked it even more than I did the first time. Yeah, yeah, Peter. Good suggestion too. To, to make it for anyone who gets an application. I have a 6.30 Zoom meeting with a, with a client. Um, so can we move it quickly if there's something? Yeah, to I have to get out of here too. I, I move approval of the, oh, sorry. I was gonna move the minutes. Well, first we have to do the Stanley Williams, John Nummy thing on a legal trail. I know yeah. that, I, I stopped myself. So Sarah, he, has applied, he has applied for an access permit for access off off the trail, uh, which is the interconnection between lower and upper Sunnybrook. Steve has reviewed this with him and has approved his plan. Okay. Uh, so it's up to us to grant the permit and then I will sign it. What, what does he want? He it, Access for what? Driveway. Oh, okay. Plan. A driveway, okay, all right, yep. Yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a driveway. Originally, it was the thing where the, the lawyer presented us with an easement, which confused us because we didn't know oh, right, right. why it was an easement. And we said, he doesn't need an easement. He just needs an access permit. Okay. So, so this is that. And he desperately needs this to close. Okay. So. Move I approval. Approve it. Yeah, and I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So, Move. Sarah? Yes. Um. Do I really need to sign these or can we can we authorize you to sign them? Well, you've got to come in, you've got to sign these two other things. So why don't I just create a folder for you and you can come in and sign those three things. Okay. I'll come That's down right. tomorrow. He need, he desperately needs that, right? Okay. So why don't you why don't you the why don't you just amend it to say that you authorize Sarah to sign on behalf of, of you? Can you just do that? The board can the board just give me the sure. authorization and I will sign. Let's just do another yes. motion. Yeah. Okay. Either I don't the, care. You want to amend it or another let's motion. Just add it, let's just add it to the motion. If everybody, everybody agree with yeah. that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I know I've got to sign those other two things, but I know he's frantic to get that. So. All right. I will sign it tonight and I will send it in. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, Move approval of the minutes. Okay. Is there a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We've approved the minutes. Orders, are we all set on the orders? Dorinda's left. Yeah. I haven't looked at him yet, but I will, and then I'll send my approval. I, I meant to say I approve them, but I uh, haven't done that. I haven't looked at him yet, so I will look at them tonight, later on. Okay. And we have tabled the, uh, we have tabled, I'm sorry, the uh, charging station issue. Yeah. My printer, for some reason, cut off the bottom of my agenda, but I think the only other item on there is the uh, 
Correspondent. There's a letter, Sarah, from, from Notch Road. Yes. No, well, no. Penny yeah. Dow and Penny, they're actually very similar. Penny no, Dow they're two. They're two. One, Dowen I, can do the Penny, I can do the Penny Dowen thing very quickly. So okay. um, Penny Dowen complained that uh, Government Hill was not being adequately sanded uh, in a letter. I mean, that's the overview of the letter. She describes sliding down the road, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Steve confirmed to me today that in fact, not only is the road sanded, but they put down extra sand on that hill because it's so steep. Now, is it sanded every hour? No, it isn't. Could she drive down the road and find it to be slippery? Possibly she could, just like any other road in town. Uh, the comment Steve had, and I agree with it, is if the roads are bad, why wouldn't she either go out Culver Road and French Road and go around instead of, she's up right. at the top of the hill. She doesn't have to drive right. down Government Hill. Right. But anyway, would, would Steve, Steve and I agree to, I'm going to write her back a letter in a nice way, tell her what I just told you. And that'll be our, our response to that. But we're not sending a truck up and down Government Hill every hour just to keep it so yeah. she can go up and down there anytime she wants to leave. Unless anybody disagrees, that's what we're going to do. No, nope, sounds good. So the other, the other letter, which I believe you got a uh, copy of, got a copy of, of was the letter pertaining to, uh, well, it isn't real. I always call it Notch Road, but it isn't Notch Road. But it's it's the road up to the town forest, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's the problem, the problem relating to the Class Four section of the road, mm -hmm. where one landowner in particular, but I guess really all three landowners, uh, want the town to upgrade that road and, of course, to sand it and maintain it. One of the landowners now plows it, but he doesn't sand it and it's slippery and there are people walking up and down the road and he said it's dangerous. Now, Steve has been in touch with him a number of times and explained to him that it is, you know, our plan to work on that road, but it's next year when that work is planned to commence, not this year. So what Steve and I kicked around was uh, two ideas. And I want to run them by you, and I, I don't want to make a decision tonight because I really want Steve to be part of it. But I had, I had two off-the-wall ideas, and Steve thought they were both worth presenting. One was, one was to say to those three people, okay, we understand, you know, we, as we discussed way back in the spring, by developing the town forest, we have created traffic on that road, both walking and driving traffic. Now, what, what we also said to him back then was, if you didn't plow that road, people wouldn't be driving up and down it. So by choosing to build a house up there and agreeing to plow the road for the other people who choose to build a house up there, they have created this problem as much as we have, because if the road wasn't plowed, people wouldn't be able to drive up there. Um, but all that said, all that said, um, it is definitely a it is definitely a safety issue. So, what we're thinking about is two proposals to them. Proposal number one, which is the Peter Hood off the wall a little bit crazy proposal, is we say, okay, we're going to gate off the road in the winter time, so people can't drive up there. The three residents will have keys to the gate, and they can let themselves in and out and they can maintain the road any way they want to, but it's not gonna be open to the public in the winter time. Now, if I were them, I wouldn't like that proposal very much because it means you gotta get out of your car, unlock the gate, drive through the gate, get out, lock the gate, go on up the hill. But it's a way to, if they're really concerned about safety, that's a way to take care of the safety issue. Way number two is to say, okay, we will agree to pay 50% of the cost, meaning we, meaning the town, will agree to pay 50% of the cost of sanding that section of road by an independent contractor with a small truck. It is, there is the only way the town could sand that section of road would be to have one of our great big trucks try and back up that hill and sand it, which would be a bad idea, plus the idea of as Steve said, once we sand one class four road, we're going to be sanding them all. Right. 
Um, but to say, okay, we'll hire we'll hire a contractor to do that. Somebody with a small a pickup truck and a sander on it, basically. And the three of you, the three landowners up there, pay half the cost, and the town will pay half the cost. They ought to hire the person. We don't want to have anything to do with controlling sanding of a class four road, because then the, it's the same thing. It will be yeah. the all the other class four roads. Well, why aren't you hiring a sander for us? Mary, I, I hear you. Yeah. All I'm saying is I do think that this is a little bit of a special case because by developing the town forest, we help create this problem. And ultimately, our goal is and our plan is to upgrade that section of road starting next year and then make it a road that the and remember this is a project that's getting funded jointly by the WMA I believe is the right word the state folks up there they're going to pay for this part of the cost of this upgrade and the town's going to pay for part of the cost that's the concept I um, think they're, I think they're pretty darn lucky to get you know us to move that construction project ahead of a lot of other ones and so um I mean, if I don't mind paying half, but I don't think that we should be doing the contract. I no, think we shouldn't. Well, the only reason, so let me, let, me, let me just tell you what my thinking is on that. So my initial thought was to say to them, you hire somebody to sand it, you guys pay half the cost and we'll pay half the cost. The problem yep. with that is we have no control over the sanding, whether it gets done or not, whether it's done properly or not, whether it's done timely or not. If the person works for us, we but then control. We have control over it. We're moving it from a four to a three in some ways. And that's if I were, if, I mean, if I were their lawyers, I'd argue that we we're taking those steps. Don't you remember what happened when we started doing the, the plowing? Gary started doing the plowing up to Jan, uh, Jan's house, Theron. Yeah, but I also remember when we, uh, when we started sanding and plowing McCullough Road when it was still a class four road, Mary. And you know what, that all worked out. So all, all I'm saying is there, there, there are times when you have to take action for public safety. And I think this is one of those times. So all I'm asking is that's the proposal. If somebody has other ideas, we're willing to listen to them, but the road is unsafe. It's dangerous when it's icy. There are a lot of people in town residents walking and driving up and down that road and if someone gets hurt you know darn well the town's going to get sucked into it so that's why that's why i came up with the idea of blocking off the road that solves that perfectly yeah <laughs> i like <it> best <laughs> but anyway we're not making a decision tonight but there's the update do you want me to put that on do you want me to put that on the agenda for for uh january yes please okay so with Merry that, Christmas I think we're coming everybody. again. I don't have the last. There's nothing else on the agenda, right, Sarah? Merry Christmas. <laughs> nope, you guys, hey, hold on. Know. I think I think Paul may want to speak. Hey, hey guys, sorry. Hopefully you can hear me. Here, yeah. I just just kind of wanted to speak on on the subject of the road commissioner position. I didn't have a chance before you guys switch subjects, but just just to keep in mind, even as as volunteers come forward and things to that degree that you know it's still got to be a working system uh, amongst the road commissioner road foreman and then trickling down to the road crew and i think that that should be a, a very heavy conversation uh that happens with the board and and the road crew as well as you know obviously the the incoming foreman um that 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 all be laid out very well because uh the last thing we'd want is is for something to happen to additional road crew members should uh you know a person get in there and, and, you know, relationships start to get strained. It, it would be a bad time of year, any time of year, but the, the, right now, especially uh, if that were to happen. So well, I just kind of want- echoing exactly what, uh, what Liz said earlier. Believe me, yeah. we're, we're very good cognizant thought. of that. Yeah, good okay. thought. So, so thank thanks you. guys, have, hey. have a great night. Happy Merry holidays. Uh, All right, happy holidays to everybody. Am I not gonna see happy. you until the new year?